Mr. Peterson, uh, Eugene. Um, my name is Bono. I'm a singer with uh, the group U2 and wanted to sort of video message you my thanks and our thanks and the band for this remarkable work you've done. There's been some great translations, some very literary translations, but no translation that I've read that um, speaks to me in my own language. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, take a rest now, won't you? Bye. I'd never heard of Bono before. And then uh, one of my students um, showed up in class with a copy of the Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones? And in it, there was an interview with Bono in which he talked about me and the message. And he used in some, you know, slangy language about who I was. And, uh, and I said, who's Bono? And they, they were dumbfounded. I'd never heard of Bono. <laughs> But that's not the circle that I really travel in very much. So that's how I first heard about him. And, uh, and then people started bringing me his music, and I listened to his music, and I thought, I like this guy. And I, I was starting to... After a while, I started was start being quite pleased that he knew me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the rest of the story is when the, he invited you to come and hang with them for a while, you turned him down. I was, I was pushing a deadline on the message. Uh, I was finishing up the Old Testament at the time, and I really couldn't do it. I, I, uh, you may be the only person alive. <laughs> who would turn down the opportunity just to make a deadline. I mean, come on. It's, it's Bono, for crying out loud. Dean, it was Isaiah. Yeah. <laughs> the Old Testament is a long, long book, much longer than the New Testament. And it did take a long time and a lot of devotion uh, on both of our parts to have, have that happen. I have to say, in the last years, Eugene's writing has kept me as sane as, as this is, <laughs> if you call it sane, which you probably won't. Uh, Run with the horses. That's powerful manual for me and includes a lot of incendiary ideas you know I, I hadn't really thought of of Jeremiah as a performance artist why do we need art why do we need the lyric poetry of the Psalms why do we need art? because the only way we can approach God is if we're honest through metaphor through symbol so art becomes essential, not decorative. I learned about art. I learned about the prophets. Uh, I learned about Jeremiah with that book, and that really changed me. And then uh, several years later, this was about four years ago, four or five years ago, Bonner would like this to come to Dallas, to uh, my Jan and me, to come to Dallas and for a concert. We saw, we went to the concert. He was very um, sensitive to us. It was, we were really well cared for, had really good seats. And uh, I'd never seen a mash pit before. That was my introduction to the mash pit. <laughs> Is it a pit? It's a mosh pit. Mosh pit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you can see how uneducated I am in this world. And we had a, it was a three hour lunch. And uh, we just had a lovely conversation. Uh, it was just very personal, relational. He didn't put me on any kind of a pedestal, and I didn't him. So we were very natural with each other. But I was just, uh, through that 
three-hour conversation, I was just really taken by the simplicity of his life, of, his, of who he was, who he is. And uh, there was no um, pretension to him. And uh, so I, at that point, I just, you know, felt like it was, he was a companion in the faith. I think it's one of his, one of his best ones, and he he sings a lot. I mean, he does this a lot. It's one of the psalms that reaches into the hurt and disappointment and uh, difficulty of being a human being, and uh, acknowledges that in in a language that is immediately um, recognizable. You know, there's something that reaches into the heart of a person and the stuff we all feel. But many of us don't talk about. I waited and waited and waited for God. At last, he looked, finally he listened. And he lifted me out of the ditch. He pulled me from deep mud. He stood me up on a solid rock to make sure that I wouldn't slip. He taught me how to sing the latest God song. We're at Eugene and Jan Peterson's home. Bono is coming here, flying here from Vancouver, in order to meet, be together connect as friends, but also have a conversation about the Psalms in order to share this common love for the Psalm and bear witness to others of the beauty and power of the Psalms. Cookies are just about done. Look at this. It's so good to have you here. Great to see you. Oh, God bless you. Well, God has blessed you, that's for sure. <laughs> Look where you live. <laughs> this is quite a spot. You know, I just realized, never been to Montana. Haven't you really? So many gifts already, <laughs> just, just, just since being here. And welcome to the Flathead. That's what I always like to say to people when they come. What is your earliest memory of the Psalms? And what sort of impression did it have on you both? I was 12 years old when I discovered the Psalms. I picked up the Bible and I started reading. And somebody told me that the Psalms were important, so I started with the Psalms, and I was totally confused. Because um, I grew up in a culture where every word in the Bible was the Word of God, literally. Don't mess around with it, it's just, that's the way it is. And I was starting to read uh, that he keeps my tears in this bottle, uh, shields, <laughs> uh, javelins, a rock, God is a rock, come on. And um, after about two or three weeks of this, I just was just confused and I thought, I'm missing something. And uh, I'd never heard the word metaphor before, but I learned what a metaphor was, not by knowing the name, but by just observing what's going on in the Psalms. 
So I think the Psalms are important because they, for some people like me at 12 years old, they showed me that imagination was, um, was a way to get inside the truth. I remember the Psalms from the little Church of Ireland church. Um, um, so I'm, as a child going, I remember thinking great words, shame about the tunes. Uh, <laughs> except for The Lord is My Shepherd, which was a great tune. And I really like that. This is good. Words and melodies. Ah, they have this rawness, the brutal honesty of whether it's David or not, it doesn't matter. The psalmist is brutally honest about the explosive joy um, that he's feeling and the deep sorrow or confusion. And it's that that makes, that sets the psalms apart for me. And, and I often think, gosh, well, why isn't church music more like that? The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. Is that right? It's beautiful. It was right. Oh boy, this is magic. Wow, you, how, when did you get the place? When did you get this place? Oh, it's been in the family. My father bought, brought the, bought the property just towards the end of the Second World War, 1945, 46. So then we expanded, we doubled the size of this because right. we knew we'd, we'd have a lot of guests. We knew we'd have you. <laughs> Foolishly made room for the <laughs> Irish. I got started uh, with this, uh, translating the Psalms by translating a Psalm for a certain person, just a single person, um, to try to get them to realize that praying wasn't being nice before God. I would translate a Psalm that I thought fit them. And you know, the Psalms are not pretty. They're not, they're not nice. And, um, and I would ask them, just pray this psalm using my translation. I think I'm doing it as about as close to the Hebrew as I can get it. And, but it's, it's not smooth. It's not nice. It's not pretty. But it's, it's honest. And I think we're trying for honesty, um, which is very, very hard in our in our culture. I, I'm talking about dishonesty, that I find a lot of, in, the, in, in Christian art, a lot of dishonesty. Yeah, right. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think it's a shame because you got, these are people who are vulnerable to God in a good way, you know, vulnerable, I mean porous, open. I, I, I would love if, 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 if this conversation would inspire people who are writing these beautiful voices and writing these beautiful say, gospel songs, write a song about their bad marriage. Write a song about, about how they're, you know, pissed off at the government. Because that's what God wants from you, the truth, the way, the truth. And, and that truthfulness, know the truth, the truth will set you free, it'll blow things apart. Why I, I'm suspicious of Christians is because uh, of this lack of realism and I'd love to see more of that in art and in life and in music. The Psalms have an honest quality to the, the feeling that is expressed. The psalmist is saying, I'm mad about this, I'm happy about that, I'm confused about this, I'm despairing about that. What is the work of the artist in the making of the work to acknowledge the intensity, the reality of the feeling without indulging the feeling? Self-indulgent? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm an opera singer and so 
I let those feelings go through me and come out. Having feelings is perfectly normal and, and let them out. Why do I like the Psalms? David, I like David very much. Why? He danced naked in front of the troops. That's one reason I like him. <laughs> and his missus was not at all happy. You know, it's, it's this abandonment, you know, that, that you've, got to, you've got to get it out. It's important. And dancing, very important. And understanding our, our bodies as well as our minds and our spirits. And the three person God, the Trinity, is reflected in our, our body, mind, spirit. And we have to, we ignore, we really do ignore this. What do we do with violence? Violence in our own hearts, the sense of wanting to do violence and the violence in the world. That's a hard question. We need to find a way to cuss without cussing. And the imprecatory Psalms surely do that. They just lay it out. And uh, I just, I think they're really important. If we've got to have some way in context, and the context is the whole Bible and the whole Psalter, some way in context to tell people how, um, how mad we are. Uh, one of Eugene's uh, translations, uh, ooh, 35, punch the nose, punch the nose, is that 35? It's fantastic. And uh, punch the nose of the bullies, God. Um, but I love the idea of you've got to cuss, find a way of cussing without cussing. And you have to give vent to that. I like that, that that's going to stay with me. Do you have songs? that have given some kind of expression, narrative, poetic, to violence, to this yes. violence in us, violence in the world. Yes. And it's called Raised by Wolves, the song. And I tried to make it real, Try to bring people to that place, because it must have had an effect on me, and I want to understand violence. Um, a bombing that I missed in Dublin myself, um, three car bombs, time to go off at 5.30 on a Friday night in 1974. Any other time I would have been on the street where the bomb went off because I used to travel through the city centre from going to get two buses home from school. And But there was a bus strike that day and I took a bicycle. And I have no problem with the Old Testament. I don't see God as a violent God, but I think the world is a violent place and it does reflect that. And and it, it's a terrifying thing, some, some of the Old Testament, but 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 it is real. And in a way, I kind of prefer it to the airy fairy stuff where we don't get, re you know, we don't, where we, where we don't get real. Is there a way to read the Psalms through Jesus' eyes that helps us understand violence or nonviolence? Well, yeah, the crucifixion. Where there's violence, there's got to be some kind of response. And is it more violence or less? I'm glad we have a crosses in every room in this house, but I, when I look at those, I think, I don't think of decoration. I think of this is the world we live in, and it's a world with a lot of crosses. And I just would like to spend my life um, doing something about that through scripture, through preaching, through friendship. Uh, and now my, you know, my ears are years are getting shorter and. I uh, don't have nearly as many left, but I, I don't want to escape the, escape the violence. Be with us as we continue our lives of serving you with poetry, with the arts, with song, finding ways to enter into what you're doing, already doing not calculating the chances, but doing what's right there, what you've already started doing. So thank you for this day, the hours of this day. Your blessing, Lord, Lord. Give us your blessing. Amen.
together. All right, see you guys. Okay. Okay. Bye. Don't run. <laughs> 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 That's very